Hi, Caleb with Brownhouse here, and this is part two of our bolt action rifle build series. So in the previous video, uh, we went through all the different part selections, uh, pros and cons of certain parts. And uh, in this video, we're actually going to be installing them. So if you didn't watch the first video and you know everything you already need, I uh, got all your parts picked out, no big deal. You don't need to go back and watch that one. Uh, you can actually start with this one. All right, so what we're going to be doing first is installing the barrel. Uh, we're going to be using this uh, proof research. Uh, we're going to be using the 6.5 Creedmoor for the Zermatt origin, which means it does not have a barrel nut. All right, so that is going to be going in to our Solus action. All right, so let's go ahead and go over the different tools we're going to be using for this. All right, the first tool and probably my favorite new tool is the short action custom barrel vise. Uh, this thing is absolutely insane. So this barrel vise itself, there's a piece here that mounts to our table and that is set up for Arca. And the bottom of this barrel vise is an Arca rail. So you could potentially you know, have a bunch of different tools for working on your bolt guns and things like that set up with Arca rails and then you can just slide them onto your bench, quick change all your tools. You don't have to worry about having a bunch of stuff mounted on your bench. And what we actually do is we have our standard vise we mount to the bench here and we just leave this mounted on the bench as well so we can do uh, bolt action work whenever we need to. And all we need to do, slide this in the rail and I'll just go ahead and tighten it down to the table. And that Arca rail is extremely rigid, so this thing isn't going anywhere. Um, and with this comes inserts for the actual barrel vise. So this is made to fit a number of different barrel diameters, uh, which is awesome. That gives us a lot of versatility. Uh, we don't have to use separate dedicated barrel vices for different barrel diameters and things like that. And it's nice and organized. So we'll set that there. All right, so for our action wrench, we are going to be using the Aero Precision Soulless wrench they make specifically for this. Um, and I mean, it just slides in, locks into the lugs and gives us engagement where we need it. And we're going to be using a torque wrench with a 7 8 driver for said action wrench. And then I have a couple of uh, Allen wrenches up here for the barrel vise. And of course, Brownells Action Lube Plus for our barrel threads. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go ahead and take this barrel and put it into the barrel vise. We're gonna be using the 1.2 inch inserts because that's what fits this particular barrel. Uh, you may have something different depending on what barrel you have. So keep that in mind. We're gonna go ahead and open our barrel vise here. It's on a hinge to make things super easy. We'll take our insert using the steel portion of this carbon wrapped barrel. We're just going to set it in there. Close her up. And we are going to tighten her down nice and snug. All right. So from here, I'm going to take a bit of the Action Lube Plus and I'm just going to put it on our barrel threads. And a little bit will go a long ways here. I'll do the same thing to the action. And I'll use the tool I didn't mention, which is a rag, and clean it up here. And we will just carefully thread our action on. We'll go on hand tight, just like so. 
All right, nice and snug. Now we'll take our action wrench and we'll just slide that into the action and twist until the lugs align and it'll seat in there just like that. All right, so now we can torque it down and the action wrench tells you 75 foot pounds right there. So that's what we'll go to. Using a seven eighths sockets, I'll just torque it down. All right, that is 75 foot pounds. And now our barrel is installed. So I'll go ahead and take it out of this barrel vise here. Or actually what I'll do, I'll just loosen this. I'll rotate it. And I'll just snug it back down just to hold everything in place. Um, we're not gonna be putting any more torque on it. What I'm gonna do at this point, and what we're gonna need now uh, is some headspace gauges. So I'm just gonna check the headspace on this and make sure that's good to go. And for that, I'm gonna need the bolt. So we'll be right back with that. All right, so we have our bolt that we showed in the previous video. And then we also have a go gauge and a no go gauge for 6.5 Creedmoor which is obviously the caliber we're working with here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at this point, uh, and if you'll notice, the gauge itself is cut on the backside here for extractor clearance. All right, so we don't have to remove our extractor. I'll just go ahead and get the bolt started here. All right, that's in the action. And first I'm just gonna close the bolt fully and make sure it's not hitting the face of the barrel, which it's not, so that's good. Just like that. I know. It's kind of hard to see from that side. Um, let me actually rotate this 90 degrees real quick here. There. All right. So our bolt closes fully with nothing in it. So that's obviously a good sign, right? So what we'll do now is take our go gauge and line up that extractor clearance. Put it in and close our bolts. And it closes fully on the go gauge, which is a great sign. And then we will pull our go gauge out of there. And then we're gonna do the same thing with our no go gauge. All right, and that does not close which is exactly what we want. So we check the headspace on this. The headspace is good. The barrel's torqued down. All we gotta do is just throw the rest of the components on it. The, uh, the dangerous part is over. All right. So we're done with our headspace gauges. Don't need those anymore. I'll just go ahead and pull our bolt back out. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this barrel off and show you how to install and headspace the uh, Savage small shank style with the barrel nut. All right, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and install the trigger. All right, so we'll be right back. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do now is show you how to install the barrel using the uh, barrel nut, so the Savage long shank style. Now, the great thing about this is that you don't even need the barrel vise. We went ahead and removed the barrel vise. We're just gonna be using a standard bench vise for this. All right, so. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to put some padded vice jaws in. I'm going to set my action in just like this. I'm going to try and grab the, there's two flats, if you notice, on the side of the action here. That's where I want to grab. All right, nice and snug in there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the barrel nut that came with the soulless action, and I'm just gonna put 
a little bit of grease inside of it here on the threads. And if you notice, the teeth on the barrel nut uh, start at the front here and stop at the back. So you want to slide in the full tooth portion onto the barrel like that. And we're just going to go ahead and screw it all the way down until it stops. You don't need to force it on tight whenever it stops. Just as soon as it uh, stops turning, stop right there. All right. And that's it right there. And we're getting grease everywhere. It's perfectly fine. All right, so now at this point, there's a good bit of grease on those threads. I'll just add a little bit more. Now we'll just go ahead and carefully screw the barrel into the action. And we'll just screw it most of the way in. All right, now what you need to do is take your bolt We'll insert that. And as you can see, it doesn't close. All right, so we need to back this off a bit until it does close. And we'll back it off just a hair more. And now at this point, since it's in the vise, I have to remove the bolt to do this. But we're gonna take a go gauge and a no go gauge. And I'll start with the go gauge first, okay? So what I'm going to do is insert it. I'm going to be doing it from the bottom. I know you can't really see this, but I'm just inserting it into the chamber. That's all I'm doing. And this one is cut for clearance on my extractor. And we'll insert our bolt. And that's as far as it goes, so we'll just back off. Try again, there it closed. All right, so I'm gonna tighten it just a little bit more, try and find that spot. It's right there, so right here, it, I can't, if I can, I can force the barrel on more and the bolt and that headspace gauge is pushing up against it, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna come just snug, I just use my fingertips basically to tighten it down. And then I come off slightly and then I hand tight this barrel nut. All right. And then we just pull that go gauge out of there. All right. All right. Now I'm going to take my no go gauge and I should not be able to close the bolts with this one. So everything's nice and snug right now. We're good. Slide this in. And the bolt does not close. So right now our headspace is good. We'll take that other gauge out of there. All right, and now all we need to do is torque down the barrel nut. Uh, we're going to be torquing it at 40 foot pounds and the padded vice jaws are probably not going to do it. So we're going to get rid of those. And in the Aero Precision box, they were very generous to uh, provide some cardstock. So we'll use that to protect our action against the jaws. Now, if you're using a vice with serrated jaws, don't do that. Use, you got to use something with soft jaws for this because those serrated jaws will eat through whatever you're using. All right, so we'll just set one side like so, close in our other side, and set it as well. Snug up our action. Slide our torque wrench on.
and go for 40 foot-pounds. All right. And that's our 40 foot-pounds. So as I mentioned before, at this point, I like to check the headspace again. So now we'll just take our bolts, take our go gauge, all right, that closes. The no go gauge. does not close. All right, so uh, now that we have our headspace good to go, we can continue on with installing the trigger mechanism. So we'll be right back with that. All right, so now we're ready to install the trigger group. All right, so like I said before, we're gonna be using this Timney here. The installation method for this one is the exact same on all the other ones. All right, so. What comes with the Solus Action is this bracket here for your, your trigger mechanism. These two pins, as well as the screw. Now the tools we're gonna to be using, uh, we have a Fix-It Sticks here with a T10 driver for that screw. And then we are using a small amount of 271 Loctite on that screw there. Okay, so what we need to do at this point is note how this bracket actually mounts into the action. So it's going to go just like this. Then that screw is going to lock it in. And your trigger will be sitting like so. All right, so we can pull this out and go ahead and set the bracket just like this onto the trigger mechanism making sure that the tail in the back is facing down towards the bottom. Then we can take our pins and set those in. Doesn't matter which one you do first, front or rear. Just push that right in just like I did there. And then we do the same thing with the front one. Just like that. Then we set the whole thing into the action. Then we take a little bit of our Loctite. I'll put a drop on the table there. take our screw and just get a little bit on that screw. Then the screw is going to go right into that action. And we'll put that screw in nice and snug and that is our trigger installed. All right, so let me get the barreled action out of this vise real quick here. All right, so if you notice, there is the Remington style bolt catch that's still on the side of this trigger, uh, but it doesn't interface with anything because with the Solus action, your bolt lock is actually right there. And you could remove this, but honestly, it's not in the way of anything. I just leave them in place. It's not gonna hurt anything at all. All right, now, this is an adjustable trigger. Um, at this point, depending on which trigger you have, just follow the instructions to adjust it how you see fit for your personal preference. And at this point, we can go ahead and do a safety check. So we'll just slide our bolt in, close it, 
put it on safe. It should not fire at all. Push it to fire. And remember, this is a two-stage. And it works just fine. All right, and that's it for the trigger installation. Uh, now, at this point, we can go ahead and drop this action into a chassis um, or go ahead and install the muzzle device. You don't have to do it in any particular order. Um, I think what we'll do, since we still have the uh, barrel vise out and set up, we'll actually use that. We'll set our action in here and we'll go ahead and install our muzzle device. So I'm going to get this back set up in the vise and we'll be right back. All right, so now we can go ahead and install the muzzle device. Uh, the brake we're using here is the Area 419. Pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is install the mounting piece uh, right onto the threads, and then we'll install the self-timing piece. All right, so all we're going to do is thread this onto these barrel threads. And then we'll put a wrench on it to torque it down. That'll do it. All right. Now, remember I mentioned before uh, in the first video that this was a left hand thread to tighten this on. And it's a taper lock, so all we need to do is align this, get that horizontal alignment. That looks pretty good. And then this is knurled so you can tighten it by hand. Snug that down nice and tight, and it is not going anywhere. Uh, the taper lock is a really solid lockup. And that's it for the muzzle device. All we need to do now is drop this uh, barreled action into the chassis. So we'll get that set up and be right back. All right, so we have our MDT HNT 26 chassis ready to go. All right, so tools we have here, we have our fix-it sticks again. Uh, we have a torque driver with it and the two bits needed to install, uh, which is a 3 16 Allen and then a T15 Torx bit. All right, and of course, whatever chassis you're using, it's probably gonna be completely different, um, but that's okay, just follow the instructions that come with it and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we'll take the chassis and the action and if you notice, you have this screw hole in the rear here then another in the front. These are your action screws, all right? So the short screw is gonna be in the front, long screw is gonna be in the back. And what we need to do is just drop our action in. Our recoil lug is going to be, and if you'll see here, I'll try and get it close to you here. Our recoil lug is gonna be right in the front portion there. And this is your recoil lug. We're just gonna flip our action over and drop it right in. And there's a little bit of play in there, that's perfectly fine. We'll set our action upside down. All right, now I'll let this sit just like that. And I'll take the screws. So two action screws and two washers. I'll take the short screw first, place the washer on and drop it, so I'll try and get this so you can see here. Drop it into this front hole. And all I'm gonna do at this point is I'm not even using the handle or anything. I'm just gonna snug it up by hand, just like that. Do the same thing with the rear action screw. We'll drop that down in there. You know, it's a little bit deeper, so I'll use the handle for this and just snug it up by hand. We're not going tight yet. All right, now I'm gonna take these three four end screws and my T15 bit. I'm gonna slide the four end over my action or over my barrel. 
then back up here to the chassis, just like that. I'm gonna take the bottom screw and just snug that up first. I'm gonna do the side screws. I know you can't see this one, but I'm sure your imagination will not fail you. I'm just putting the screw into the hole. Just like that. All right, so now we can go back and snug these up. And that's all we need to do for the fore end. All right, so now at this point, we can go back and torque the action screws down properly. And I'm just checking the depth on this here. Yeah, all right. All right, so we're gonna do 60 inch pounds on each of these screws, and we're gonna do the front one first. So I'm just gonna torque it to 60 inch pounds. All right, front one's done. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing on that rear screw. Sixty inch pounds. And that is all there is to it. We have installed the MDT Hunt 26 chassis onto the Air Precision Solus Action. And then now what we need to do is just a function check, make sure everything still moves right, feels right. We'll even go ahead and check that trigger again. And that all feels good. All right. So now uh, what we need to do is pick out a magazine and there's a few different options out there. Um, Magpul, P-Mags are great. Uh, any AICS pattern short action magazines will be just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a magazine and uh, we'll be right back with the close. All right, so now the rifle itself is complete. Uh, the magazine we went with was the MDT metal magazine. Uh, as I mentioned before, any AICS short action magazine will work just fine. Now, uh, this is a 308 magazine, but it'll work just fine with the 6.5 Creedmoor and typically with pretty much any of those 308 base cartridge type uh, setups. So uh, that's all there is to it. And this is, you can get the magazines, of course, in pretty much any capacity. This is a 12 rounder. Um, if you want something smaller, that's perfectly acceptable. You can get them in various different capacities and styles. So what we're going to do uh, from here. All right. So in the next video, we'll be going over optics and rings. So I'll show you which optic and ring I chose for this particular build. And then most importantly, we'll go over how to mount the optic. Uh, that's an area where a lot of people either mess up or just struggle with in general. There's a lot of misinformation out there and there is more than one way to do it. And I'll show you my preferred method and we'll go from there. All right, so if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get notified when the next video launches. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.